Welcome to Space Time with Dave. This is my image stacking tutorial for PixInsight. Um, just to show you what we're going to be working with, uh, here is a single exposure of NGC 2359. This is known as Thor's helmet. Very interesting looking object. Uh, so that's a single exposure. This is the uh, final stacked version. Um, so you can just see the uh, how much the reduction in noise and how much better um, you see how much improvement you get from the stacking process and then here's my final processed image so um, really cool really cool looking object so I'll, I will just minimize those and I'm actually gonna just close close all these Close them. Okay, so um, now uh, what I am going to the process I'm going to be doing. Uh, PixInsight has a lot for uh, a lot for stacking. Um, the process I'm going to be going through is a simplified version of uh, Light Vortex Astronomy's tutorial. So um, this, I mean, look at the size of the scroll bar here. This is a very in-depth tutorial. He covers everything. Um, so if you have the time and you want to go through all of this, um, you can do so. Um, for my images, since they're uh, color DSLR images, we can really skip a lot of these steps. I'm not going to be calibrating in um, darks or bias frames. So, um, and, uh, so I can skip a lot of these steps. So the only steps I'm going to do are steps three, generating a master flat, and then registering and integrating the light frames. Uh, well, actually, we're going to be calibrating too. So we're going to be doing three, a little bit of four, and then uh, six on these. And we're going to skip all these other steps because uh, I don't need them. Um, whether or not you need them depends on uh, the camera you're using, the pixel scale, and some other things. Um, so uh, in this case, uh, it's a little bit simpler. So if you if you do need to calibrate um, bias and flat uh, I'm sorry, bias and dark frames, then you'll need to go through some more steps here. So here is my, um, here are my two folders. Uh, I have my flat frames and I have my, uh, these are my light frames, all the raw files from my camera. And so the first step is to um, generate a master flat, is to integrate these flats to generate a master flat. So we do that with process image integration. So we're just going to integrate these. And okay, so I'm gonna add my files and desktop, yeah, flats, and I'll just control A, select them all. Alrighty, so now under image integration, the combination we're going to do is average. Uh, the normalization mode is multiplicative that's a tough word to say weights uh, we don't care and that is pretty much it so next is pixel rejection one and under pixel rejection the rejection algorithm we're gonna do is percentile clipping and we're gonna uncheck clip low range so these should do it now if you have if you shot your you may need some more pixel rejection, um, if depending on how you shot your flats. If if you shot them with it with the t using the t-shirt method um, against the sky, and you may have picked up some stars, you may need to um, change these values. But I didn't, so we'll leave it alone, and uh, just hit the apply global, and it's done. So with that done, we can close image integration, and if we do Control A, we can see what was rejected. So um, yeah, that looks like I don't want that in my image. And rejection low didn't really do anything. And here's my, so here's my master flat all finished. Um, so mine have this uh, blue tint to it because the uh, glow panel I was using has kind of a blue light to it. So um, it's probably not ideal. It definitely fixes the vignetting and, um, but um, it, it, as this blue cast to my images, which then I have to subtract out. So uh, that's just kind of my fault, and I'm still working on taking perfect flat frames. But they work 
they work okay for now. So I'm just gonna save this as, and um, go on my desktop, and I'll just save it in my flat folder. And I'm gonna just call this master flat. And I'll save, okay. Okay, my master flat is finished, um, so I can close that. And now what I need to do is I need to calibrate my light frames. We do that with image calibration. And so target frames I'm going to add are my all of my raw files from my camera, my light frames. And I actually forgot a step because so if you look at my all of my light frames came out in portrait mode, so I actually need to go and rotate my master flat Okay, so I need to rotate my flat here. So geometry, fast rotation, and I'm not sure if it really matters which uh, which way I go here. Okay, so I'll just do that. Um, okay, and then I'll save it. Then I'll, I'll save it as, I'll call it uh, 90 or something like that. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, now um, back to image calibration. I have already added all of my light frames, and I need to specify an output directory because it's going to calibrate them and then generate a new file. So, new folder, and I'm going to call this the, call it what it is, NGC2359 calibrated. And, okay, select folder. Um, all I have to do now is just uncheck master bias and master dark because I'm not using them. I'm only going to use a master flat. So I will select my master flat and I'm going to use the rotated one. And that's it. Just apply global. Now this takes, uh, it's going to take a good long time because I have many uh, light frames. So uh, we'll, we'll be back. Okay, that is done. Image calibration finished. So let's take a look at my uh, calibrated files here. Calibrated. So a whole big volume of them. I'll take a look and see what this looks like. So now I should see more of a flat field, which I do. And my flats are not perfect, um, but it did eliminate, uh, pretty much eliminates the vignetting. So that is uh, very nice to have. Okay, so my lights are calibrated. The next step is to use the star alignment tool to uh, line them all up, or as Pixinsight calls it, register them. So I'll do star alignment. And for this, I need a reference image, but we just select one of our files. Go to my calibrated folder. And I always just select the first one. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, target images, add files and uh, make sure you add your calibrated files and select them all and specify an output directory so I'm gonna go up and do NGC 2359 cal calibrated registered I like to uh, some people will abbreviate this I like to uh, type it all out um, um, there's plenty of space on the computer to do that on the screen to see it all and when you're dealing with multiple directories and bouncing things around um, I, f I like to be very you know deliberate about the way I name my files and folders so that's that's what that's about um, and that's it that should be everything I need I don't need to change any other settings just hit the button and sit back Okay, star alignment complete. I will close that. Now let's take a look at the registered and calibrated uh, files. Registered means aligned. I'm not really sure why they have to use two different uh, terms for that, but that's how it is. So if you look at an, a registered image, you'll see the black border. So what that does is that shifts all of the images to match the stars against the 
whatever the reference image was. So all of them except for the reference image will have some black bordering going on. And that's okay, we'll just, we'll just crop that out. So the next step is to integrate the registered and calibr calibrated frames. Process image integration. And this time we add the calibrated and registered files. Control A, I'll select them all. And okay, so image integration. Under image integration, the combination we're going to use average. Normalization, we're going to do additive. Uh, the weights, I'm just going to leave at noise evaluation. And everything else here, I'm just going to leave and go to pixel rejection. So the rejection algorithm that you're going to do for pixel rejection depends on how many frames you have. If you have less than 10 frames, then you'll want to do averaged sigma clipping. If you have between 10 and 20 frames, do Windsored sigma clipping. And if you have more than 20 frames, then, like I do, then use linear fit clipping. And this information is on the Light Vortex Astronomy page tutorial. So it's in underneath here. Um, uh, so if you need to reference that, that's where that is. And I usually have to reference that myself um, to remember, you know, what these settings need to be. So I'm going to uncheck clip low range and hit the button. Okay, image integration completed. So I can close that and like that. I kind of like that it shows you all this extra stuff that's not in the image. Not quite sure what slope is, but I guess we don't want it in there. Uh, the rejection high, this is all the noise that it pulled out. And um, I like looking at this, it really gives you an idea of how uh, effective the process is. Notice that it pulls out even these uh, satellite streaks through here. And so that's cool. And here is my integration. I'm just going to geometry rotate this. Whoops. Um, geometry fast rotate that really quickly and there it is so um, whoop that's upside down let's re let's rotate that again so there it is um, and now at this point I will do a, uh, a crop to crop out these the edges of the stacking here and then proceed to do my processing as normal so that's it. Um, I do a very abbreviated version, like I said, of the, of the stacking process in PixInsight. Um, check out, and I'll, I'll add the link, um, check out Light Vortex Astronomy. This is basically everything you need to know about stacking in PixInsight. So that's it. I uh, hope that was helpful for you. Um, let me know in the comments, and uh, do me a favor, hit subscribe, and uh, rate, share this video, all that stuff. And I will catch you guys next time.